Hi, Alan Stratton from Meswood Turns. In last week's video, I talked about miniaturizing the Longworth chuck, and here it is. Uh, I have one uh, adjustment to make to last week's video, and that is when I made this really small one, the slanted grooves, straight grooves, worked just perfectly. However, when I went up to a 5 inch, they didn't, so I'm afraid we're stuck with the curves, but not a big deal. So here we are at the Longworth. I added uh, Tommy bar holes and some grab holes. The Tommy bar are the most significant because that allow me to handle it with one hand. The platforms are oval with a ledge so that when it twists against the wood, it binds and doesn't keep spinning. Uh, it doesn't then require another tool. Uh, I found it easier to put it on the faceplate and then mount the wood. Uh, so that's enough for the chuck. Let's go on to making these uh, face uh, these bracelet blanks. You'll see me using a lot of these wood, uh, threaded wood face plates here. This one's been used. It's all messed up. It's ready to face off and probably add another layer of wood and then use it again. So with this process, I was able to get three blanks made, and I have four rings out of one of them and two rings out of the other two. So I'll show you how we do that and uh, it's been a great ride. I hope you enjoy it and go ahead and work towards making your own bracelet. So uh, let's turn a bracelet. To make an assortment of bracelets, I prepared a variety of wood. I plan to mix and match these for several styles of bracelets. Some of these are segment rings of 12 segments prepared as I usually do. And please see some of my other videos for preparing segment rings. I also cut some square pieces of veneer. These are also to mix in for color and for a different grain orientation. I could also have laminated or solid wood. Anything goes, but I still want to start with these. Now the next task is to flatten one side of each ring on the disc sander. This will give me a good glue surface. I start with a maple ring that will serve as the first and last layer of the bracelet. Double stick tape will fasten this ring to a waist ring. The waist ring is glued to a threaded wood faceplate. I cannot live without these. I have dozens of them in a variety of sizes. The waist block has been faced off and flattened previously. Using a Longworth chuck on the live center centers this ring and presses it against the waist block. Meanwhile, I know that I want maple on the opposite side of the bracelet. So add more double stick tape to another faceplate on the opposite side. Since the ring is already centered, the second faceplate is mounted to a threaded live center that accepts my waist block, then press together. Now I can split the ring on my lathe with my usual parting tool. When almost through, I loosen the tailstock to prevent binding when it finally cuts through. Now I have two maple rings already mounted and already centered. Back over at the metal lathe to face off the slightly rough parted surface. Again, the alternative is to do the same task at the wood lathe, but this is quicker and easier. While I am at the metal lathe, swap faceplates for the other part of the maple ring. Then face it off also in preparation for the next task that needs it. Let's take a look at a more difficult case, the heat treated ash. I do not heavily machine stock before segmenting. My process self corrects for much of the variation. However, since this board had a lot of missing from the edge, my segment ring has one side that is too rough to use. I apply double stick tape and press it to a faceplate using a cone center in the middle. Since it can accommodate a cone center, this is quicker than using the Longworth chuck. With the rough side now accessible, my gouge will make quick work of cutting it back to where it has a consistent thickness and face. Normally, I would finish with a round nose scraper and a sanding board to achieve a consistent glueable surface. Then move my faceplate from the wood lathe to the metal lathe and take a couple of passes until the surface is near perfect and ready to glue. The dark ash can now be glued to the maple. It is already centered on a faceplate. All I need to do is to apply glue and press them together. After 5 to 10 minutes, depending on shop temperature, I can take it off the lathe and do something else. Right now my shop is cold so I take it inside to be warm enough to let the glue cure. Please note that the dark ash is much thicker than I want for this layer. 
With the glue dry and a little denatured alcohol, I can release the dark ash from space plate. I have prepared the opposite maple and it is ready. Now to glue the second maple to the dark ash. Please note that the dark ash is still much thicker than my target, but now is captured between two maple rings. After the glue is dry enough, I can part the dark ash. I chose a point a little larger than my target width on the one side, then part it off on the opposite side. By the way, a trip to the metal lathe cleans up any roughness on the surface. Again, this could be done at the wood lathe. Now for a more complex glue up. I want a layer of veneer on both sides of what will be a center core. Veneer is tricky to glue because it loves to warp when glue is applied. I have it already pressed flat. Now spread glue on both dark ash and two pieces of veneer. This time I press them together with a layer of parchment between them. I let this glue dry much longer because of the veneer's tendency to warp at this thickness and kept it in clamps for much longer than for a plain segment ring. Time for the center ring. I spread glue expecting to use the cone center for positioning. However, I forgot that the maple veneer does not have a center hole to allow the cone center to go into while positioning the next ring. I had to quickly swap the cone center for the Longworth chuck, but not a big deal. With glue dry, I can part off the birch ring to target thickness. Please note that I have already flattened to op the opposite side of the birch, but decided not to attach it to a faceplate at this time. Over to clean up the faces. With all wood ready, I can spread glue for the final joint for this bracelet set. Time for an overnight or more glue dry time and remove the faceplate from one side with DNA. With cool temperatures and the possibility of glue trapped in voids under the veneer, I still found wet pools of glue. Then let it dry some more. However, I'm confident that the wood layers are hard. The bracelet block is hard and still on one of the face plates. It is time to clean up the outside perimeter. Glue has a tendency to go everywhere, including joints where only double stick tape is used. Therefore, while cleaning up the interior, I make sure I have cut out any glue squeeze out. I must admit that I tried to part this blank into separate rings with my usual parting tool. This is not a great choice since a tall parting tool does not work well with a tight curve kerf. I tried to compensate with a wider kerf, but it is still a problem as it binds at top, bottom, and inner middle. Instead, I found a piece of 1 8 square high-speed tool steel. I plan to insert this bit into a handle until I realized that the metal lathe could do it again faster and easier. Again, the metal lathe excels at straight work. This bit is available from machinist suppliers. I found it again at McMaster, Grizzly, Amazon, etc. I also ground relief off the bottom corners to allow for the kerf curve. So back at the metal lathe, that same bit is in the tool holder. The lathe gears make easy work of parting off the innermost ring. Then out for another, and another. Sweet! Four rings. I probably could have only gotten three from the metal lathe. The bit is very small. I proceed gently to prevent the bit from breaking. Back at the wood lathe and my new mini Longworth chuck. I found it as difficult to tighten as its large relatives, so I added finger grab holes and Tommy bar holes. Tommy bar holes were the best addition. I found it best to loosely attach the chuck to the faceplate first, then loosely position the ring to the chuck, tighten the chuck with Tommy bars, tighten the knobs, and finally tighten the central screw between the chuck and the faceplate. With this size chuck, I could hold the tommy bars with one hand, then it is a matter of sanding up through the grits and applying shellac. With the first mount, the pins are on the outside and I can sand the inside away from the chuck. Second mount, pins are on the outside and sand the opposite inner surface. Third mount, pins on the inside to sand and finish the outer and outside away from the chuck. Fourth and last mount, pins on the inside to sand and finish the remaining part. I like oval pins with a ledge. 
The oval shape keeps the pin from spinning while tightening nuts on the opposite side. This was faster than I expected. I like the bracelets or bangles and like the process and the new tools to make them. I can make any size I want without the need for chucks at each size. Most of the time was spent going the blank. The final turning was easy. I still have a ways to go before matching bracelets with Nelson Kessinger, but my path is much more clear and easy with my new tooling. What suggestions do you have? Please give this video a thumbs up, and it is best to subscribe via my website. Do both. Also, tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week, I add a new wood turning video to my website. Always, please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. It could save your life.